This is scary. It feels like it's as tall as me. But if you can't tell, I had a great reading month. This is definitely a record reading month for me. This is not normal. I don't normally read 21 books in a month. And I don't think it's something that I will be doing every month at all. I don't think this is the new normal. I think this is an anomaly. However, I had a lot of fun. And I have a lot of really fun books to talk about. So I'm going to start off with the first book that I read and make my way through the list. Starting off with The Girl Before, which is a thriller. And this is the only thriller I read this month. It's the first thriller. I've read in a while. I think it actually sounds quite similar to a Riley Sager book that I've heard about but haven't read but there's a lady who rents this really beautiful house that has been designed by an architect and it's kind of like a piece of art I guess that's at least how the architect sees it so he's very specific and particular with who he lets lease it and this lady leases it but has to follow a bunch of rules about it but it turns out the architect is just this really like weird kind of guy and it turns out that the previous woman who rented the house ended up dead and she's trying to kind of like delve into that and figure out how that happened and she's just kind of getting sus about a lot of different things and there's a lot of people and characters in this book that you're like I feel like they are suspicious I feel like they've got something going on and you just like don't really know which obviously that's common in thrillers but I feel like the author did such a great job in just making you feel creeped out because the actual things that happen apart from the other lady dying <laughs> are not that creepy like she's just living in a house but the house feels so creepy there's like a lot of atmospheric vibes going on which was just really good the writing is also just really interesting in this i don't think there's any quotation marks which i know annoy some people but but for the most part that didn't really bother me it's just got a very unique writing style and i'm really interested to read some of this author's other works because i know they have quite a few i don't know it just creeps me out but it was a good time i think i rated this one four stars but i also don't read a lot of thrillers so if you do read a lot of thrillers I don't know how much weight my review should hold but it was a good time the next book that I picked up was Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas which is the next book in the Throne of Glass series that I am up to and I loved this this was one of my only five star reads this month if you've heard people talk about the Akatar series a lot of people say just wait till the second book because the second book is like where the plot really begins and I would argue this is a book where the plot really begins in this series because yes we've had the first three books that have really set up a lot of the main characters a lot of the foundation the world building all of those sort of things and I enjoyed the first few books in this series but this one feels like where it really begins you get a very big piece of information at the end of Crown of Midnight and that information really just switches the trajectory of the entire series and so this one just kind of felt like you were reading a brand new story and a lot of new characters were introduced who I think are also going to be very significant parts of the future books and I'm just really excited to see where the rest of the series goes I have started Queen of shadows but I haven't finished it yet then I picked up the very highly anticipated these twisted bonds by Lexi Ryan which is the second and final book in the these hollow vows that's such a mouthful these hollow vows duo duology I guess duet I don't know this is YA fantasy a lot of people compare the first book to Akatar. I can see the comparisons but I don't think it's as similar as people make it out to be I really really enjoyed the first book I think it was a five yeah I think it was a five star read for me and I ended up reading this one 4.5 I still really enjoyed this book and I really enjoyed seeing where the story went there is a love triangle that was set up in the first book and so I was really intrigued to see which guy ended up with the main character and I was very happy with the choice that was made and with the, the ending of the book, I guess, which is nice. But I honestly feel like this little duet, duology, whatever you want to call it, is a really great entry into fantasy if you haven't read fantasy before. I would either recommend the Cruel Prince trilogy or These Hollow Vows because they're both really fun, fast-paced, great characters, fun plots going on, but they're not too complicated and I just think they're a lot easier to get into compared to some other fantasy series. And they're also not that long. Like this one's two books, The Cruel Prince is three books, so it's a lot easier to kind of not be intimidated by them, I guess. Um, also, don't be intimidated by this one. I know it looks quite huge, but the text is fairly big. I literally read this book in two sittings, so don't be intimidated by the size. I also just love the covers of these books. Next, we have Where the Real Damage Was Made, and that is when I decided to pick up Shatter Me. This series is quite old. I think it came out in like 2010 2011 and I know that it has been popular for quite a long time but I feel like very recently I was just seeing a lot of my favorite booktubers book creators read this book and so of course I was influenced and so I decided to pick it up for myself and I'm so annoyed because literally a year ago I saw this book in a thrift store but I wasn't reading fantasy at the time and I was like mm, I don't know if I'm gonna read it but I've like seen a lot of hype about it and I didn't pick it up and then I ended up buying it for full price 
should have just bought it at the time for like two dollars anyway not a big deal but i fell in love with this book i know a lot of people say that they don't really like the first book and it takes them a couple books to really get into the story but i was obsessed with the first one i thought it was such an interesting concept this series is like dystopian slash fantasy it's set in the future where the world has basically just like failed the government has failed and a new government type of thing has surfaced called the re-establishment and they are just controlling everything that everyone does everyone has to get certain jobs and only gets like rash for food and it's all just really like dark and dreary and sad but we are specifically following Juliet who has actually been locked in a mental asylum because she has lethal touch she hasn't been diagnosed with any sort of mental illnesses or anything she's only locked there because of her lethal touch power I guess you could say that's kind of where the fantasy elements come in but anyone that she touches immediately dies so in order to keep people safe they've locked her away in a cell in this mental asylum and so you get to read from Juliet's perspective which is so interesting because it really feels like you're reading just like a train of thought kind of process it's kind of messy it's kind of confusing when you do read it but it's so intriguing and then one day she somehow gets out of the asylum and you get to follow kind of just her story about what happens to her the people she meets the alliances she makes and why she needs to escape, what she needs to do. And you're slowly kind of unpacking what the re-establishment is doing and who is in control and all of those sort of things. I feel like if you liked The Hunger Games back in the day, you would like this because it has those adventure elements, a little bit of romance. The romance subplot in these books is absolutely top-notch. I'm obsessed with it. It has action, it has character development. We have emotional depth. Like, I feel like it has it all. So obviously I became obsessed. So I read the first book, which is Shatter Me. I read Unravel Me. I also read the novellas the first two novellas but I read them on my kindle I'll actually post the reading order on the side here in case you want to understand how to read it I read ignite me restore me and half of find me because find me is a novella bound up and so I haven't got to the second novella yet because I'm like not up to it in the series like in the reading order but I obviously really love the series you can tell I think I rated shatter me four stars unravel me four stars unite me and restore me were 4.5 stars for me and then the novellas are like not as highly rated for me but only because I find it hard to rate a novella because you're not getting that much information and the novellas in this series are kind of like repetitive because you're reading the same order of events that you've already read in the main books but you're reading it from a different point of view so you're reading it from like a side character which is still interesting and helpful and I do recommend reading the novellas but I just can't rate them as highly so I think I usually rated them around three stars but yeah this was definitely a chunk of my reading this month and I just... I'm obsessed and I think I have two books and two novellas which I'm really excited to read and I'll definitely get to those in September but I'm also sad that I'm going to be done with the series already. I don't think I've ever read a series this big this quickly. I usually space big series out over time because I don't want to get like burnt out but these ones I have just wanted to read straight away because they always end on cliffhangers and I always want to know what's going to happen next. Next up I read Counterfeit by... Kirsten Chen. This is a newer release. I guess this is just either general fiction or literary fiction. I don't ever know how to classify these books that don't fit into any other genre. But this book is about Ava and Winnie. Ava used to be a lawyer but then she had a baby so she went on maternity leave and she's kind of unsure whether she wants to enter back into her previous job and into that kind of industry. And then we have Winnie who was her college roommate I think for a short period of time and Winnie kind of just comes back into her life quite randomly and offers her a job. And at first Ava doesn't really want to take it, but she kind of gets sucked in and Winnie is a very convincing person. I don't know what the right word would be. I guess we'll go with convincing. She's very convincing. She convinces Ava to kind of get on board with her business venture, which happens to be in buying and selling counterfeit handbags, which is so interesting. So she buys designer handbags, well, counterfeit designer handbags that are like perfect replicas of actual designer handbags and she sells them. Anyway, it's really interesting to see the thoughts that go on in Ava's head. Most of this book is in Ava's POV, but you get to see a little bit of Winnie's POV and I wish we got to see more because it would be so, so interesting. And, and when you get to Winnie's POV, you kind of realize that it doesn't line up with some of the things that you've been reading from Ava's POV, but you don't know who is actually telling the truth and who's being the unreliable narrator, I guess. Even the concept of this kind of black market situation 
situation with counterfeit handbags is something that I've just never heard about, known about, never really looked into, but something that I assume is a real thing that happens. So I feel like the concept alone was just enough to hook me in and really get me interested, but I feel like you don't really care that much about the characters. So I think I rated this 3.75. I still would recommend it to you, especially if you find that kind of concept and those topics interesting, but it's not at the top of my recommendations list, but definitely worth the read. Then I finished The Masterpiece by Francine Rivers and I really enjoyed this. This was a four star read for me so I definitely recommend. If you don't know Francine Rivers is a Christian fiction author so it just reads like a novel but it's written by a Christian lady and there are like elements of Christianity and the gospel and characters being Christians in this book but I honestly do think that even if you're not a Christian you would still really enjoy this because the plot is really good the characters are really interesting and even if you took all the Christian elements out of it it's still just like a really good book so I would recommend this personally to anyone but I do want to let you guys know that it is a Christian fiction book because I know that not everyone's going to be interested in picking that up. This story is about a fairly famous artist and he has decided that he needs a personal assistant so he hires this lady called Grace who is a struggling single mom pretty much and she comes and works for him and they kind of like build this like friendship I guess at first. He is quite grumpy but I quite like that this wasn't like a grumpy sunshine story. It was kind of like a grumpy and assertive woman kind of romance which is such a fun mix because you have this woman who just like doesn't put up with the grumpiness of the guy and I wish I saw that in more romances because every time he would say something like kind of mean or like grumpy or like rude or whatever she would literally call him out and I just thought that was really funny but you get to see them build a friendship and then it kind of like turns into this like we kind of have feelings for each other but we don't know what this is and she's Christian and he's like pretty much atheist and they've both gone through so much in their lives like just so many awful things and so they both have all these walls up these barriers all that sort of stuff so it's really beautiful getting to watch those barriers get broken down and just seeing the character development with these two main characters. I would say all the Francine Rivers books that I've read are very like slow but deep love stories. So there's not a lot going on at all times. It's very slow paced, but it's worth it. And because it's slow, you just like care so much about the characters. So keep that in mind. If you want to pick it up, I definitely recommend. I think it's beautiful. I love seeing emotional, really deep love stories, but it is a bit more slow paced. Then the next few books that I read were all in my five romance books in five days video so I'm not going to talk about them too much but I read The Air He Breathes which was a Kindle Unlimited book and I liked this but didn't love it. There was like a part in the book that really like held me back from really enjoying it. It was okay but I don't think it was very memorable for me. Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter was a really fun time. The banter was really good. It was very like witty humor which I enjoyed. So I had fun reading this but it just wasn't like a top favorite for me. I think I rated it 3.75 so still recommend it but not quite as good as her other novel Better Than The Movies in my opinion. I also read Well Met in that video, which is, again, a really fun little rom-com. It's kind of like a grumpy sunshine vibe as well. I forget how to say it. I got in trouble in my video. Like, you guys said I said the word wrong, but, like, Renaissance. I'm going to look it up because you guys said I said it wrong, which is, like, fair enough. Renaissance. Renaissance. <gasps> I really was saying it wrong. Renaissance. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Renaissance. I feel like after hearing things in an American accent, saying them in an Australian accent always sounds wrong. It was centered around a Renaissance fair. So it was a fun time, but it just didn't stick out to me. It was very forgettable, kind of boring, but it was still good. Like it was just a solid rom-com and I think I gave it like 3.25. I also read Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating and I really enjoyed this. This was super fun. Friends to lovers, forced proximity, opposites attract kind of vibe. It was just a really fun time, but the plot kind of fell flat and it had a trope near the end that I don't really like <laughs> but it was still good so again 3.75 for this one then after reading romance for five days I was kind of sick of it so I picked up City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert which I think is historical fiction I guess it would be but this was really good I rated it four stars I originally bought this because a lot of people compared it to the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and that got me hooked I was like if anything similar to that I need to read it and I can definitely see the parallels but it's still quite different in a good way I feel like this is like a no plot just vibes kind of book but there's still a lot happening but there's no real direction that the plot is following. But the book is told from Vivian's perspective. I think it starts when she's about 18, 19. She ends up moving to New York because she gets kicked out of college or school, wherever she was previously, to go live with her aunt. But her aunt runs this huge 
theatre, I guess. But it's not a very professional theatre. It's kind of one of those ones where it's just a community kind of hanging out, putting on shows for a laugh kind of thing. And when she gets there, everyone's kind of like, well, what are you going to do with yourself? And she's like, well, I know how to sew. How about I make costumes for everybody and I can just you know, work at the theatre. I'm living with my aunt, so I don't really have to make a lot of money. She comes from a family that has a lot of money, so she doesn't really care about finances and like building a career. She just kind of wants to have fun in New York while she's young. So you follow her life being this costume designer slash maker in this tiny little community theatre, and you see her meet all of these really interesting people. You see her kind of like fall in love and date, and this is all set in the 40s. So it's so atmospheric. It is so fun to read. You get to go through so many time periods of her life because you follow her from like 18, 19 up until she's maybe like 70s or 80s. I don't know. It was so unique. It's unlike anything I've ever read. Like I said, definitely has similarities to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo in terms of just that like old Hollywood, old money kind of vibe I guess. Not as much plot going on in this one compared to Seven Husbands because in that one there's kind of like there's a reason why all of those things are happening and why that story is being told. And in this one there kind of is but it's just not as prominent. Definitely recommend this one. I really loved it. It was such a fun time and just such a refreshing story to read after reading a bunch of romance. Speaking of romance, I read another one which was probably a mistake I'm not gonna lie but I read The Spanish Love Deception. It has been on my TBR for the longest time. I've been wanting to read it for the longest time. I've heard so many mixed reviews about it. Some people love it, like diehard fans. Some people absolutely hate it. I'm pretty sure Jack Edwards said it was like one of the worst books that he ever read. And so I just wanted to try it for myself. I went into this thinking that I wouldn't enjoy it at all, mostly because the books that I've heard it compared to, I think, is like The Unhoneymooners and The Hating Game. And I didn't really like either of those. I didn't hate them, but I just didn't really love them. And so I kind of went in being like, I don't think I'm going to enjoy this. And now that I'm done with it, I don't even know what I think. I feel like I'm almost indifferent towards it. I think I'd rate it like three and a half stars. It wasn't bad. It just wasn't anything special to me. And I'm so confused as to why it has so much hype because I feel like people really are right or die for like Aaron Blackford especially. And honestly, he is a very nice guy. I just don't get the hype, I guess. It just felt like every other rom-com that I've ever read. I can totally respect people who absolutely love it. And I can see this being like a real comfort book for people. I think this is one of those books where you will either click with it or you won't and it doesn't really matter if you do or if you don't but I'm glad that I read it I'm glad that I experienced it for those who love this book I'll, I'll let you continue loving it because I know that a lot of my favorite books some people just cannot click with it all I know multiple people who have DNF'd Archer's voice which breaks my heart but it is what it is we all have different brains and it's it's fun having different opinions but that's my take <laughs> on the Spanish love deception something completely different from a rom-com was Bunny by Mona Award and oh my goodness what an absolute experience it was to read this book and I still honestly don't know what to say about it or what to think about it or what to rate it I haven't rated it yet because I just my brain doesn't know what to do with this. I know everyone says it and it's almost like annoying when you haven't read it and you hear people talking about this book because they're like oh my gosh it's so bizarre and all of these theories and rah, rah, rah and like this symbolizes this and whatever it is but now that I'm one of the people who have read it I understand why people say all of those things but this is basically about a girl who is in college in like a post-grad fiction program so she's learning how to be an author I guess but her cohort is quite small I think it's her and four other girls and those four other girls are absolutely inseparable. They call each other bunnies and they call themselves the bunnies and she feels really excluded from them and one day they invite her to come to one of their little bunny meetings bunny hangouts and so she goes and she kind of just falls down the rabbit hole if you will into this world of just absolute chaos and bizarre weirdness and it just feels like you're reading a fever dream and I don't want to say too much else about what the book is actually about because I think you just need to experience it for yourself however once you have read it please go on reddit and look up bunny mona award theories and read everyone's theories about what they think certain things mean because it is so 
interesting. So if you have read it and haven't looked up theories, you definitely need to do that. But if you haven't read it, don't look up the theories. It won't make sense if you haven't read the book anyway. But do I recommend this book? That's a difficult question. I honestly don't know. I feel like it was really interesting to read something just completely different and so unique from anything else I've ever read in my life. But would I read more like this? Probably not. I just don't think it's for me personally, I don't think it's my kind of vibe. It's quite dark and I can't see this being a genre that I want to delve more into, but I also understand why some people love it. So that doesn't answer whether I'd recommend it or not. I'd probably lean towards no, if I'm being honest. But for me personally, reading it was just like a curiosity thing. Like I wanted to understand why everyone talks about it. And I'm glad that I read it because now I like get that. So I feel like if you're curious about it, like why not? Why not try it? But also, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's up to you. And then the last two books that I've read are rereads. I read The Inheritance Games and The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And I don't do a lot of rereads, mostly because I have a never ending TBR and I always feel guilty if I'm not reading something new off my shelf and reading something that I've already read. But I wanted to reread these in kind of anticipation for the third book release that has just come out. I think like today when I'm filming this, I literally just got my notification that my click and collect is ready to go pick it up from target i'm so excited <laughs> i wanted to reread the first and second book because this is one of those books where you need to follow the plot and you need to remember what is going on and what happened in the previous book so that you know what's happening in the next book i'm assuming i haven't read the third book yet but i knew i would need to read this if you haven't read this series i 100 recommend it i guess it's like ya mystery adventure kind of vibes basically we have a teenage girl who has inherited billions of dollars from this old guy that she's never met and she doesn't know and she has nothing to do with is not related to so she's obviously very confused and his family is also very confused because they expected to inherit all of his money and all of his things. But the guy who died had four grandsons who are similar age to the like main character. They're all like teenagers, early adult kind of ages. And they wanna know why she's inherited this money and so does she. So they kind of all band together and they try and figure it out. And they uncover a lot more than they probably thought they would. There's a lot of riddles, a lot of adventure, a lot of puzzles, a lot of secrets that they uncover. And it's just honestly so much fun. And reading it again, honestly, reminded me why I gave it five stars. I gave it five stars all over again because they're just so fun, so fast paced, so interesting. And I feel like they're just written really well in the sense of like every little detail lines up and every secret is answered. And the ones that aren't answered, I'm assuming are gonna be answered in the next book. And I just cannot wait to get started on the third book in the series. And I'm so sad that that will be the last book in this series will be over, but cannot recommend these ones enough. And it was just so fun to reread them. I forgot how much fun they were. But those are all the books that I read in August. Like I said, I just had so much fun reading this month and I just love talking about books in general. And hopefully I'll be posting my TBR in a few days time. So if you wanna see what my reading plans are for September, make sure you're subscribed so you can watch that video in a couple days time. And I would also love to hear what your favorite book that you read this month is because I'm always looking for new recommendations, but I love you guys. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Good bye.